All right, guys. So let's start off with marginal costing. Now, marginal costing is one view as to classify costs. So marginal costing believes that a cost can be divided as a variable cost or a fixed cost. All right. So a variable cost is a cost that will change with the level of output. So as soon as I produce one incremental unit, I should incur some cost. That cost will be called a variable cost. An example of that would be raw material. All right. So whenever I produce one extra unit, I know that I will have to buy material for it. Labor. And I talk about direct labor. Direct labor is basically workers who will be manufacturing that product for you. So as soon as you ask them to produce one more unit, you will have to pay them additional wage rate for that. So this becomes a, va a variable cost. On the other hand, they say that the other type of a cost that a firm will incur is fixed cost. Fixed cost are those costs that do not vary with the level of output. So if I produce one additional unit, there will be no impact on such cost. An example of that would be rent. I would classify rent to be a fixed cost. Salary. So if I have a supervisor who I'm paying on monthly basis, so whether I produce 100 units, whether I produce 200 units, his salary will stay the same. That becomes a fixed cost over here. Yeah, so in marginal costings view, the relevant cost is only variable cost. All right, so you guys have to understand that marginal costing is basically used for short term decision making. So in the short run, the only relevant cost that we have is variable cost. Fixed cost is assumed to be constant in the short run, which is why marginal costing, whenever they will make any decision, their decision will revolve around the variable cost. All right. So we can say that marginal costing is used for the following purposes. All right. Marginal costing is used to calculate the break even point. We'll discuss this later, obviously, whether to make or buy a product. So a firm will have to decide that is it profitable for us to make or buy a product. All right. Another decision is if a firm receives a special order, let's say you can't sell at the normal selling price, you have to sell it at a lower price. What will be the cost of the order? Again, something related to the short run. And if the firm has any limiting factor that will restrict its business activities, how do you maximize your profit in such a scenario? So we'll use marginal costing uh, in all of these scenarios mentioned above. Okay, but before that, I would want to discuss first about variable cost and fixed cost in detail. Okay, so if I examine variable cost, let's say I have to draw the graph of variable cost on a cost against output frontier. All right, so the first thing that I would see is uh, whenever I'm drawing any graph is when X is zero, what will be Y? All right, so in this case, X is my output, all right, and Y is my cost. If I look at raw material, all right, so if I produce zero unit, if output is zero, what will be my raw material cost? I know that my raw material cost will also be zero because if I'm not producing anything, I'm not buying any material. So I can say that when X is zero, Y will also be zero. So I'll start this graph from the origin over here. Now, as soon as I increase my output, as my output will increase, my cost will also increase. And, and we're assuming this will happen linearly, all right? So we're assuming that our raw material cost will stay constant over time. So my graph should look something like this. Yes, so this becomes a linear line, which is a y is equal to x line starting from the origin. So as you increase your output, your cost will also increase. This is how the graph of a variable cost will look like. All right. So as I increase my output, my cost will also increase with the same proportion and a constant slope over here implies that the variable cost will stay constant over time. All right. Now let's switch to a fixed cost. Let's see how would a fixed cost look like. So on the same frontier, if I draw a fixed cost graph, a fixed cost would look something like this. All right. So it will not change with the level of output. Again, using the same logic as before. Let's look at rent. So when my output is zero, 
let's say i do not manufacture anything i will still have to pay the rent so if i've taken the factory my rent will still be there all right so i'll have to pay rent let's say ten thousand dollars i still have to pay this so now if i increase my output as well my cost will stay the same over here all right so my so my rent will be the same until and unless i have to expand and when i expand i'm going to show the next graph but till i can use this factory i will pay ten thousand dollars regardless of the fact i make zero units i make hundred units or i make two thousand units all right so it's going to be a straight horizontal line which depicts a fixed cost now let's look at the other situation where fixed cost can actually increase when your capacity changes so we will call this to be a stepped fixed cost so a step fixed cost means that fixed cost will stay constant but it will stay constant till you're operating in your capacity so let's say this rent was for factory one all right i can call this to be f1 now f1 has a capacity of 5000 units so till i'm producing 5000 units i can label it over here my rent will be $10000 all right it's going to stay $10000 fixed but the moment i need to expand i need to go above 5000 units i will have to rent another factory let's call that to be factory 2 factory 2 comes at the same rent and has the same capacity of 5000 units now now what happens is that my rent has doubled from 10,000, I have to pay rent for two different factories. So I have to pay a rent of $20,000. So you can see your fixed cost has stepped up. So now this fixed cost will be for 10,000 units. And it will go on with this whenever we expand our capacity. So one thing that we should understand is fixed cost does stay constant till you're operating within a capacity. Once you move beyond that, it becomes a step fixed cost and it will increase so it will jump once and then it will become constant again okay so the next cost that we will examine is a semi variable cost so a semi variable cost is a cost that will contain a component of variable cost and a component of fixed cost all right so it will have a portion of variable cost and a portion of fixed cost the best example one can relate is the telephone bill. Particularly if you guys are using postpaid services. So for example, if you sign up for postpaid services from Varid or Mobiling, Jazz, anyone. So this is how the postpaid package is offered to you. There is one component that is your line rent. All right. So let's say they will charge you. 500 rupees a month as line rent all right and then they will say they will charge you let's say 0 0.2 rupees per minute for a call now if you see what this line rent rep essentially represents is the portion of fixed cost so if you go on a vacation for a month and let's say you do not use your phone at all you will still get a bill equal to 500 rupees that represents the line rent so that is your fixed cost it will not change regardless of your output so even at zero output you have to pay this line rent and the call rate per minute that essentially represents your variable cost all right so the more calls you make the more bill you will have to pay that becomes your variable cost so the telephone bill which is the postpaid service essentially represents the semi variable cost now what we can say is that the semi variable cost will look something like this so if i take you guys here the cost will look something like this on this graph what you guys can see is the dotted line represents your fixed cost all right so this is the line rent in my example that's your line rent so regardless of your output you will have to pay this fixed cost all right and it starts from zero and this portion over here essentially represents the variable cost so the more 
output you consume the more cost you will incur that represents your variable cost component so this can become a graph for semi variable cost however we can also see one more case yeah so your semi variable cost can actually look like this as well now uh, if you guys see whenever you get some postpaid service so let's say when you're paying that line rent 500 they will also give you some free minutes with it all right so let's say if you paid 500 rupees to varit what they'll do is they'll say that in 500 rupees you get 100 free minutes just giving an example i don't know how many free minutes we'll get but 100 free minutes so what's going to happen is that up till 100 minutes your cost or your bill will stay 500 rupees so it's going to stay fixed over here all right so this portion remains your fixed cost but the moment you exceed 100 free minutes all right they will start charging you that variable rate which i just explained is 0.2 rupees a minute and then it becomes variable cost from this point onwards so i can say that semi variable cost can also be like this that you, your cost can be fixed till a certain level of output and after that it can become variable as well all right but essentially a semi variable cost will be a cost that will contain both a component of variable cost and a component of fixed cost over here all right i hope you guys understand these uh, these different costs the last thing that i would want to talk about is the cost per unit so if if we talk about the variable cost per unit graph it should be a horizontal line now this looks like a fixed cost the idea is this that if we're assuming raw material to be five dollars per unit then our assumption is that no matter how much output i increase the raw material cost on a per unit basis will be five dollars only okay. right so this is different from a variable cost if you guys remember variable cost line will look like a linear line which is a y is equal to x line that's the total variable cost what we're talking about is the variable cost on a per unit basis similarly if we look at the fixed cost per unit line that should look something like this all right this will be a line with a decreasing slope now the reason is this that if we talk about fixed cost per unit fixed cost will stay constant over time but your output is increasing your units are increasing so this entire number should be decreasing so as you produce more unit the fixed cost per unit should decrease over time which is why it looks like a downward sloping curve over here all right so differentiate between the total variable cost total fixed cost variable cost per unit and fixed cost per unit all right i hope this does make sense hey there if you like what you saw right now head over to altacademy.org for access to content around six subjects with past papers videos revision guides flashcards and academic support all of this is going to make sure that you're completely set for your a levels so i'll see you there on the platform